you guys just talk on some of the some of the management decisions you have to make when you're selecting your cover crops? Well, it depends too on on, on what time you're going to plant them. Like even last year with the prevent plant, you know, I knew like if I could plant them early, I wasn't going to put like any kind of uh, small grain or cereal right in because I didn't want them going to going to seed. So I started off. And it depends what you're going to plant, and, and if you're planting soybeans into it, you can go ahead and plant something that's got a high carbon nitrogen ratio, like sedan, and have some millet and stuff in there, in the mix uh, early. Whereas if you're going to go corn or wheat, probably more broadly, something to build nitrogen. And then later, I mean, like what I did when it got when it started getting later, like August, and I started putting like oats and barley in there because I. And then when it got real late, I went to the cereal rye and winter wheat. Yeah, you just gotta, you gotta have an idea of what you want to accomplish. I mean, you can't, it's, the more species the better, but in general, what we've done is, is, is basically like, we like the smaller seeded stuff because it's less expensive. Um, so, but if you want to shoot for compaction or nitrogen adding, species or you know it, there's a whole range of of traits that these cover crops have and you just need to have a plan of attack of what you want um, happen on your on your fields i know with my job i work with so many different producers over such a wide variety of counties um, i did see some i was looking at mixes with producers and we'd uh, identify some some things out there where they they maybe wanted one species and ended up with a different one maybe they weren't exactly sure what species they wanted and the ones that come to mind right away is the the con confusion or the mixing up of annual ryegrass and cereal rye so i just encourage producers to do their homework do their research and make sure they know what species they want and then follow that through and make sure that's the one in their mix um, there's so many different clover options out there there's lots of different clovers uh, the millets last year was another one that was, there's a lot of different millets that they can choose to just make sure they do their homework and, and have the, the correct one that they intend in their mix. And if they need to terminate at a certain time, how to terminate them properly? That's definitely important, right? Because annual ryegrass versus cereal rye, you're going to have a, a different recipe there, a different plan for termination. Because most of the time the annual ryegrass will winter kill, but if it doesn't, then what's the plan? And with that, we usually look at whether we're going to graze it or not. Um, where we're grazing it, yeah, we'll get more oats in if we're going after small grain. A lot of times we'll put in an oats radish field pea mix. Um, but other cost is the thing too, we try to keep it under $20 an acre. Some of these mixes can be 30, 40 bucks an acre. And I can't pencil the return on it. So we look at it of if we're going to graze it or not, how much residue we want left there for the next year, what crop we're going to plant. Um, and sometimes it's what's in the bin or what's cheap. Um, we make a mix up according to cost. <laughs>